that greater calling is using your God-given gifts to fulfill your purpose that, that we've been trying to communicate for each of us. We have this purpose in us that God calls us and gifts that are given. They're not gifts we've mustered up. They're not gifts that we've just, you know, just tried to learn. They're actually gifts that were given to us as a people of God, gifts that are poured in to the life of the church, gifts that are poured in to us for his kingdom. The Lord promises the Holy Spirit to come to his church. He says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to empower you by my Holy Spirit. And, and the work of the Holy Spirit will be a work of truth, will be a work of gifts, will be the evidence of my kingdom on earth through the people of God, which is, is us, the church visible on earth. And I'll pour my Holy Spirit into your lives. And Jesus proclaimed that, that uh, out of our hearts will flow uh, rivers of living water, that that we should be continually, out of us is pouring out him of who he is, this, this living water. And, and that's the, the call that we have for each of us, that the gifts are being poured out of us, that we're, we're a river, not a pond, that, that it continues to flow into us and then it continues to flow through us. And we discover serving the Lord with our God-given gifts, what it does is it, it unlocks his true joy. We sang a lot this morning about the joy of the Lord and, and because there is a joy to serve. And we don't know it until we start doing it, that it unlocks something that we're, we're, we're giving back in a way uh, that we can't uh, really understand how, how, how God works. But the more I'm giving of the gifts he's given me, the more I get. And, and I'm, my response is that there's this pure joy in my life because he's using me for his kingdom purpose on earth, whether he's using me in my family or using me in the workplace or using me in a conversation with someone I just met. Either way, there's a joy that comes, and we, we find that, that true joy when we begin to walk in those gifts. And what we know is Jesus came. What did he come to do? He came to redeem the lost, and he came to empower them to serve for this transformation of life that each of us should be experiencing, that if you've met Christ, your life should be different. If everything's the same, then, then something hasn't changed in that encounter that you should have. I didn't say everything got easy, mind you. Everything doesn't just get easy, but everything changes as a result of that encounter of who he is, that, that we're, we're changed. And all are called and few are chosen. And when we read that, we have to be reminded that the call are the ones they, that all receive this invitation to come to this life of transformation, to come to a place of hope, to come and experience this true joy. All are called. All are welcome to this invitation. But the difference between the called and the chosen is the chosen are those who hear the call and then believe. You know, there's so many that, that are called and, and, and they don't believe. They don't respond to it. The chosen respond. They say, I believe in that invitation I've been given of this life of transformation in a relationship with the living God. And as a result, we begin to follow him. And, and remember, Jesus doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the call. So he's not saying that, um, you know, when you finally get your act together, then I can really use you in my kingdom. There would be no church if that was true. It would just not exist on the face of the earth. But somehow in our minds, we think, I've got to get it all together. Let me give you a hint. You're never going to get it all together. Uh, we're always a work in progress. We're always growing, we're always learning, we're always transforming. If the, the power of a living God and the Holy Spirit's living in us, we're, 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 we're followers of Christ and becoming more like him and becoming less like the world. And that's what we're invited into. That's this incredible change that we can walk in and that we're not worried about uh, whether uh, I'm qualified enough. Because I don't qualify, but he qualifies us. He qualifies us. And that old expression that God doesn't make junk. What he creates is in his image. And we're created in that image. And he qualifies us under his righteousness, not our righteousness. And so we're invited. We're invited 
All called, many are chosen. Uh, all, all called, but then there's those who are chosen. We're invited into this relationship with a living God. Not a God who's so distant. Not a God who is, is, is out of contact with us. Not a God who we can't approach. We're, we're invited to a relationship with a living God. And that relationship we're invited to with a, with a living God is for a purpose to be his disciple. That, that's the call for each of us, which just means I'm a follower of Christ, that I'm a student of who he is, that I'm, I'm lining my life up to the way he lived his life, that we have the evidence, we have the proof, that we have everything we need to know by the one who's come and lived a life that was without sin, the one who's come who was willing to die for our sins so that we can have an eternal life, the one who lived morally sound, the one who, who sacrificed for others, the one who loved others, the one who healed the broken, the one who set free those who were oppressed, that, that our life begins to become a life living after him as a disciple. That's the call for each of us. And we're these Christ followers. And, and Jesus, what he does in that preparation to teach his disciples, that he sends them out. He, he begins to prepare them. There's a preparation for what's to come. And there's a preparation for each of us that we're a people who are, are continually being sent. We're not a people who just come and stay. But we're a sent people as a result of what we've encountered in who he is. And being sent people means that we're a people on mission. And the mission is to bring his kingdom to earth. That's the mission, that we make his kingdom visible on earth, that we're bringing his kingdom to earth, that transformation, that, that change. Well, how do you think we bring God's kingdom to earth? What would be a way that that would occur? Well, the only way for God's kingdom to come to earth is through the body that serves. That's the manifestation. You'll say, well, Father Brett, I don't look like, much like a manifestation. No, you are but I'm struggling with, so is everyone else. Matter of fact, I would, I would encourage you, sometimes in, we're held back by these struggles, all the more do I realize that I'm just stuck in my stuff. Maybe I need to get out of my stuff. I need to get involved. I need to get connected. I need to begin to, to use what he's put in me to pull me out of the place that I'm in. Now, there's... These nine signs that tell us we have a greater calling. And I want you to look at these and see where we identify these nine signs that you have a greater calling. The first is you feel discontent with your current life. You feel discontent. There's a restlessness going on. There's, there's something inside that says that I'm just, uh, why do I not have peace? Why does things not feel fulfilled. There, there's, there's something else, and we have this sense of being discontent, that, that I'm going through life, and, 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 and it just seems like there should be something else I should be doing in my life, and th there's this unsettled feeling that's going on. Well, if that's happening, it's, it's, it's proof that there's a greater calling. Second is, you just feel lost, not just content. You feel like you're going in the wrong direction. You, maybe there's a sense of complete hopelessness. That, that what else could there be? And there's this idea that I'm just lost and, 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 and as a result, I, I feel so disconnected and, and where can I get connected? Well, if you're feeling lost, that's, that's a sign that, that there's a greater calling in, in feeling lost. Third is that you dream of living a different life. Has anyone dreamed that? I think most of us, is that's an island away from everyone else where I live. I'm in the sun, and, and, and we dream of this different life. And, and, you know, our dreams change as we get older. You know, what I dreamed when I was 12 was a little different than what I dream now. But in the process of my life, there, 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 there was times where I was dreaming of something else. I was, I was dreaming beyond where I was. I was, I was. I was yet to dream what would God do? What, could, what else could I do within my life that there's, that there's something else that I'm possibly called to? And there's this dream for this, this other life, this other place. And that's a good thing. That's a, 
That's a stirring within us to dream for something else. Fourth is you're jealous of others. We, we look at someone else and there's a jealousy that's within us and saying, like, why can't I have what they have? Not coveting, but a jealousy. Maybe there's someone who's, who's walking in their calling. And instead of saying, how do I walk out my greater call, I'm annoyed by them. And you know why you're annoyed by them? Because they have a joy because they're serving in their calling. <laughs> you ever notice that really happy people make you frustrated because you're just happy all the time? Gosh. This is joy. It's supernatural. And, 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 and so what is it in us that I feel jealous for someone else who's displaying this incredible joy. Why is that? Well, I'm, I'm discontent, discontent, I'm lost. There's, there's a whole bunch of reasons, but, but it's real. It's an honest feeling that happens when I look. Instead of going, man, how do I get that life? Instead, I, I get jealous of it, and I, I, I retract from it. The fifth is you want to change. That's evidence as, as one of the signs that you earnestly, that there's something in you says, yeah, I, I want to change. I, I want to make a difference. And now that stirring begins to happen, and that, that I want to walk in, in a different way within my life. There's a desire to actually change my life. There's, there's a desire to begin to head in this new direction. Fifth or sixth, um, what happens is we live in regret. That we're constantly living in a place of regretting everything. Just regretting. Regretting decisions we've made. Uh, regretting relationships we have. Those are fun people to be around. Regretting everything that's going on. And we just wind up, well, if I'm feeling that way, maybe there's a sign in the midst of that regret that there's a greater calling within my life. And then here's what happens. Number seven, you believe you have a greater purpose in the world. All that starts to transpire within our life, and then we begin to say, I believe I have a greater purpose in this world, that there's something in me, there's something more that I can do, that there's a greater purpose purpose within my life. And what I can tell you is that's absolutely true. But this is part of that stirring that takes place. I believe there's something else. I can remember in my own life just kind of being locked in, chasing after things in the world, making money, doing all the stuff. And it felt like it was just uh, something like, uh, like, a, like, a, like a Ferris wheel I couldn't get off of. It just went round and round and round and round. And I would go, is this it? Is this the fulfillment? Is this what life's going to be for the next 20, 30, 40 years that I go around and around? There's got to be a greater purpose. There's got to be something more that, that I could be part of in the world. There's got to be something more that I can do to have some kind of impact. And then what happens is number eight. You begin to have compassion on those in need is a sense of a greater calling, that, that there's something now inside of us that says, I have a compassion, but, but I have a Jesus compassion. Uh, a Jesus compassion is when he looks into the crowd and he has compassion on them and he feeds them. Or a Jesus compassion when he looks to one who's afflicted or sick and he brings healing to their life. Or a Jesus compassion when someone's possessed and, 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 and their life is in turmoil and and he casts out what's in their life to set them free, that we have that compassion, that same compassion for, for those around us, that we begin to be less focused on ourselves and become to have more of a focus on those that we're encountering. This, this holy compassion stirs within us, and it's saying, you have a greater call. There's a greater calling in your life. Number nine, you come to a place and you realize, I want to help others. I want to give back. I, I want to serve people around me that, that there's something I want to be able to do that has an impact on someone else's life. There's some way that uh, I can serve at some capacity. And, you know, it's interesting as a pastor, I get these phone calls uh, every year or, or emails or whatever they are 
that people out of the blue begin to reach out. I haven't seen them forever, you know. Some people don't even come to church but just know me, and all of a sudden they're reaching out. And it's, it's as we get closer to, like, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And the reaching out is always, hey, is there a soup kitchen that I could serve in? Hey, all of a sudden there's this, this thing that they go, I think I'm supposed to do something and help others. And I believe that's, that's honest and earnest. But I only get that notification once a year. <laughs> I wish it was every week. Yeah, yeah. actually, there is a way that you can help others. There's, there's incredible ways if you respond to the greater calling in your life. That's how we begin to walk in it. These markers remind us that we're not satisfied with the life we have. That's what they do. They, I'm not satisfied with the life I have. And what does it do? It puts a desire in me for a greater calling that God has. It just puts a, I want to fulfill this. So Jesus prepares his disciples for a greater calling uh, on their life, and, and, and the call will not come easy. It, what he's telling them is like, listen, the call comes with opposition. The call is going to come with challenges. It's, it's not going to be easy. And we cannot let the oppositions we face keep us from fulfilling our calling. That there will always be this reason why we can't do it. And we can't allow that. In Matthew 10, 26, Jesus says this, Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be made known. That we'll face opposition, but when we answer the call, the call cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden. Don't allow opposition to stop you from completing the mission Christ called you to. We can't allow that. How you know you're on mission is you're facing opposition. If there's, if there's no opposition, I'm probably not on the mission. Because Jesus said you'll have troubles. You'll have tribulations. You'll have challenges. It'll be difficult. And when we're reading this text, he's highlighting fear and, and the reality that fear will come. And fear will always keep us from fulfilling our call. It will always keep us from fulfilling our call. And we can't allow the fear of what other people think or what, what might truly happen to us if we're walking out the Lord's greater call in our life. We can't allow fear to keep us from what God's calling us to to do. And how, how often do we fear man more than God? How often? We fear man more than God. That's crazy. But we do. We fear what man thinks of us. We, we fear what man might be able to do to us. We, we, we get so bound by fear that, that we become immobilized and we can't make a decision. We can't bring what God's revealed to us to light. We, we, we hold back. What will someone say? What will they think of me? We're, we're so worried about what the world thinks versus really understanding what does God think and what does God want to do and that I should have this holy fear of who God is in my life and I should fear no man. Matthew 10, 28 says, Do not fear those who will kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body as well, in hell. That sounds like the one I should be fearing, right? The one who has control of all things. But do not fear, fear those. And we've begun to become immobilized to this place that we, we, we don't make a decision, we don't get involved, we don't advance our, our lives in faith because we're too worried about what everyone else thinks. Here's something. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I care what God thinks. I care what God says. I care about his truth being made known. And I care that all of that is done with love. But, but we, we, we get locked in and we hold back. And we, we fear those around us when we shouldn't have that fear but there's this holy fear that we're called into with an incredible relationship with a loving God 
God's holy. He's righteous. Scripture says he's slow to anger and abounding in love. And in him only should we have this holy fear. It's only in him. And I can tell you the apostles, the disciples, they lived that way. They, they, they weren't afraid of what would happen to their body. They knew whose hand that held them. And they knew the promise of an eternal life. And, and none of that would keep them from walking out the greater call that they had. And I think all the more today that the culture needs to see the church rise up and be that evidence that we're not fearing the things around us. And what I could tell you is all the news you listen to and all the social media and all the things that you get locked in, all of that, all of that is to get you into a place of fear. All of it. Out of everything you read, never, how often are they celebrating joyous things? Most often, it's to put fear into us, and that's a fear of man. And then we begin to retract, and then we can't begin to walk out that greater call. We have to come to realize that we're created to please God, not people. That's what we're created. And to reveal his kingdom truth in our life, not to waver or settle based on what other people think. And how we participate in his kingdom really matters as a body. The kingdom of God's revealed through the body of Christ. That's you and me. And the body of Christ, his church, is the hope for the whole world. It's the hope. And the body of Christ is made up of us, the people of God, who are chosen because we responded and we believed the call. And to each of the chosen, these gifts are given. And the gifts are given to serve within the body of Christ. So it becomes a moment where how do I answer that question? What are those signs that I have? How do I respond to that call? How will I respond to that greater call? How, how am I doing with the gifts that have been given to me? What am I using them for? How can I operate in them? And, and the question would become, so we've done this series for five weeks now. What's one step I can take right now to move in my God-given gifts so I can truly participate in the body of Christ, that I can find that joy? And the good news is there's a place for everyone to serve here at Intercessor, for everyone. There's a place where we can all participate together as the body, all of us. And you may start in one area of ministry, and it's totally not for you, and that's totally okay. And then you move on to another place of ministry. But we got to start somewhere. Sometimes we're just waiting. No, that's not for me. That's not for me. That's not for me. And then we don't do anything. But we take a step in, and we begin to serve him. That one step you can take right now is you say, let me go on to the app. And, and there's a little thing there you can skip, uh, uh, press on to discover your gifts and then kind of identify what those spiritual gifts are. Or you can also go to the app or the website and you could begin to fill out some information and say, today I'm going to make a difference. I have a stirring. There's one of those signs are evident in my life, a discontent. I feel lost. I have compassion to serve others. Something's going on. I'm going to make one step today so that I can begin to discover the fullness of that joy, so I can begin to be one who begins to participate in the greater calling that I have in my life. What would the church look like if everyone who's in the body of Christ began to operate in all their gifts? It would change the world. That's Jesus' plan. <laughs> we have to heed the call. We have to respond. And he gives us free will to make that choice. But what will I do? What, what will I do to begin to walk out what God's calling me to? No one should be unemployed in the body of Christ. No one. Everyone has a role in the church where we each discover the true joy to serve. So just don't hesitate and answer the Lord's greater call for your life. Don't, don't wait. Don't, don't put off. Begin to do something, some movement. There's so many ways that you know within, we've listed on there that you can get involved and you can begin and, and begin to serve. And Because each of us have a role and, and, and we don't want to hesitate. We don't want to put off. We don't want to wait for another day. 
Today can be a day that you make a decision that begins to change the trajectory of your walk with Christ. But more importantly, that you begin to find the fullness of the greater calling that you have. Amen? Let's pray.